Good morning and welcome to this session entitled Talking About Weight. My name is Dr. Michael Crotty. I'm a GP who has specialised my practice in bariatric medicine. Uh, first of all, a couple of disclosures. So I think we know that discussing weight can be a very daunting um, prospect. It's a very personal and um, private issue for a lot of people. Uh, we also know that it's not a lifestyle issue, but a complex chronic medical condition. Uh, obesity and overweight is uh, not given the same attention as other chronic diseases in a primary care setting. Uh, and I think there's lots of different reasons for this. Uh, in today's presentation, we're going to explore the barriers to care uh, for patients and from the healthcare practitioner perspective, and then some practical advice for discussing weight. Uh, I think you know, weight bias um, in all its forms, but particularly from a healthcare practitioner, uh, can lead to um, less attendance, um, to poor adherence to a management plan, less success when it comes to managing weight. We know that weight bias is, the, is a belief about a person's value or skills based on their body weight and shape. Uh, and again, in its different forms, internalized, societal, uh, healthcare, uh, and institutional. 88% uh, of people in one particular study reported having been stigmatized, criticized, or abused as a direct result of their weight in the past. Uh, only 42% of people in this particular study uh, reported that they were comfortable talking to their GP about their weight. And again, in a different study, 52% uh, of women surveyed um, reported that they were stigmatized by their doctor on more than one occasion um, about their weight. If we look at barriers to care um, for patients, I think we mentioned weight bias and stigma, um, which is so prevalent in, in society and in the healthcare um, setting. I think previous disrespectful treatment, whether it was uh, their weight being brought up at an inappropriate time, whether it was uh, a person being shamed or blamed about their weight, whether it was an insult or inappropriate comment, uh, I think these all can have a, a very detrimental and negative effect on people. Uh, I think some people might be embarrassed or self-conscious talking about their weight. Uh, and a lot of that stems from the lack of understanding um, of the very complex um, causes of uh, this disease of obesity. I think the oversimplified view about kind of eat less, move more and personal responsibility, um, you know, has led to a lot of internal um, stigmatization and bias for people. Uh, I think a lot of people are privy to unsolicited weight loss advice, you know, being given tips or, or helpful um diet advice uh, in order to manage your weight, which again usually has the, the opposite effect. Uh, I think some people who are living with obesity um, might have experienced going to their doctor and for pretty much all of their health problems being blamed on their weight. Uh, and again, they may have been denied treatments, whether it's, you know, um, joint replacement, surgery, um, fertility treatment based on their weight. Uh, I think there there can be a lot of assumptions made and there are, are potential negative perceptions of a person's diet or lifestyle based on the weight, which are, are not always the case. Uh, I think there's a poor understanding about the um, individuality of, of weight and um, how people struggle with different things. But certainly, if we all ate the same thing, we wouldn't all be the same shape and size. Uh, and again, that's not taking into account um, metabolism, the neurological component, um, hormones, genetics, uh, environment, education, and, and so many other things. Uh, I think a lot of people may um, wrongly believe that their weight is their own problem to sort out. And again, this is based on the societal view um, that weight is kind of a willpower behavioral issue, which, which it's not. I think from the healthcare um, practitioner perspective, um, Personally, I know during my undergraduate medical training, uh, during my vocational general practice training, hospital rotations and, and being out in the community, um, there was no training about um, obesity, about the causes of obesity and about evidence-based treatment. We treated a lot of the comorbidities um, and again, didn't blame people or stigmatize them for that. But again, you know, um, in my own practice prior to um, increasing my knowledge and specializing in the area, you know, I would have, you know, advised people to lose weight, but with absolutely no helpful advice how to go about that. Again, feeding more into the eat less, move more um, fallacy. Uh, I think a lot of healthcare practitioners are concerned about potentially offending people by bringing up their weight. And this was something that concerned me too, um, particularly if I had no helpful advice to give them. Um, I think there's lots of studies showing that people are, are not offended when you bring up their weight, as long as it's done in a, a sensitive and time appropriate way. 
Um, again, somebody coming in uh, with a medical problem, we can't blame everything on somebody's weight. Um, it, it's not always appropriate to bring that up. But in the right time and place, um, I think it, it can be um, dealt with very sensitively. Uh, I think, again, um, my own um, background in general practice, um, you know, I'm very well aware of the time pressure and, and pressure and resources that GPs are, are dealing with. Um, and it can be difficult to bring up such a sensitive topic in, in this um, setting. Again, um, you know, with the perhaps limited referral pathways for dietitian or um, psychology, bariatric services. Again, it can be difficult. We're bringing up an issue and uh, sometimes then we don't know where to go with it. Uh, I think also we need to bear in mind that a lot of healthcare practitioners were you know, members of society too. Uh, we may have our own personal personal issues with weight. And for that reason, that sometimes can be a barrier to, to bringing up weight. I think there are a lot of... Uh, practical things that people can think about before a consultation um, to maybe maximize the benefit they get from it. I think booking a visit specifically to discuss weight can be very helpful and making that clear when we're making the appointment. Again, it gives a heads up to the doctor what's coming. Uh, I think being prepared and perhaps having a list of, list of questions or concerns um, can be helpful. Uh, thinking about our family history, how long we have had weight problems, the pattern of our weight gain, um, other factors that might influence it, um, you know, whether it be medications or, uh, you know, what we've done in the past to try and lose weight. Uh, this will help the doctor when they're trying to take the, the bariatric history. I think we need to be realistic about the uh, what to expect from the encounter, um, both you know, what we're going to be asked about, what we're going to discuss, uh, but also thinking about what would make this a successful consultation. Uh, you know, from the patient perspective, is it a successful consultation if we have a shared understanding of the problem, if we make a diagnosis of obesity, if we discuss you know, the biological basis of this chronic medical condition, if maybe you know, we're referred on to, to more specialist services or uh, we talk about treatment options. What is a successful consultation? It might simply be screening for weight-associated comorbidities or medical problems uh, and being reassured, you know, that there, that these aren't there. Uh, it might be talking about, um, you know, healthy eating and, and exercise. Uh, I think also it can be helpful to, to think about, um, you know, our day-to-day, -day, what might our triggers be or, or what our high-risk times might be for taking in more calories than than we um, feel we need. Uh, again, looking at you know what are our values, what are the reasons why we want to uh, manage our weight or, or improve our health, and and equally you know what are the specific and you know measurable um, goals that we want to achieve. I think during the consultation, um, I think perhaps asking the GP or practitioner what their comfort is in discussing obesity as a chronic disease. Uh, because again, like I said, um, for lots of various reasons, sometimes this isn't something that the, the GP is familiar with or is, um, you know, practiced that before. Uh, but as GPs, we're very good at seeking out knowledge, seeking out information and, and educating ourselves. So this might be something, this might be a task for the GP to do prior to the consultation. Uh, I think a good icebreaker for, for the conversation is talking about you know media coverage um, or even you know this um, these sessions that we're doing today in the in the summer school uh, I think very important um, when somebody is going and talking to their doctor or healthcare practitioner that we're not using self-critical negative or stigmatizing language about ourselves uh, that maybe we inform the doctor if we're comfortable having our weight checked during the consultation and maybe you know think about the expectation that there might be a blood pressure check or a physical exam or or some blood tests being done uh, I think it's very appropriate for a person to ask about potential referral pathways and, and treatment options and definitely to make a plan for a follow-up uh, because this is a chronic medical condition. Certainly a 15-minute appointment is, is not going to be enough to solve it, uh, but it's going to be good to start the conversation. I think um, from a healthcare practitioner point of view, uh, I think recognizing our own weight bias, um, recognizing uh, the weight bias that exi exists in the healthcare setting is, is important. I think, again, using person first, non stigmatizing language and not defining people by their weight. Uh, I think a huge game changer for me um, when I decided to specialize my practice, I had moved to Canada. Uh, I had met some fantastic um, doctors in the area, particularly uh, um, a specialist called Dr. Arya Sharma, uh, who's involved heavily in Obesity Canada. And um, in meeting him and 
and discussing things and doing some mentorships and education, um, I increased my, my comfort and knowledge. And you know, one of the biggest game changers for me was simply asking people for permission to discuss their weight during a consultation. Like I said, when it was relevant at the appropriate time in a non-judgmental way. Uh, and I think this this is very well um, received by, by patients if you ask permission. Uh, I think we need to be mindful of previous previous experiences that the the person sitting sitting in front of us might have experienced, whether they be negative. Uh, and also, I think, again, speaking back to weight bias, we shouldn't make assumptions about somebody based on their weight. Uh, we shouldn't make assumptions about their health. We shouldn't make assumptions about their diet or lifestyle um, just purely based on the weight. And certainly we should explore somebody's perspective about the weight uh, and not just assume that they want to lose weight. I think we also have to appreciate that lots of people who are struggling with weight have lost weight successfully in the past um, and, you know, may have regained it. So this this is important too. Um, I also think that as a GP, um, I'm very well aware uh, of my role as a GP. I think uh, GPs are, are ideally placed to make a diagnosis, uh, to assess quality of life and impact that weight has on somebody's medical health, screen for comorbidities, uh, to discuss evidence-based treatment options and consider referral. But certainly GPs are not dietitians. We're not psychologists, we're not exercise physiologists, and we're not slimming group leaders. Uh, so I think we need to know our role and, and step up to that role. I think we need to be aware of local referral pathways and resources that are available for patients. Uh, and I think there is also, um, in a similar way that people sometimes get unsolicited advice from family members or friends or weight loss tips, I think we need to kind of acknowledge that, you know, this is not always helpful. Uh, people are individuals. What works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another. So, you know, I think we need to limit our own kind of weight loss stories or, or anecdotal tips. I think overall, I certainly favour a, a focus on health and well-being rather than weight and, and purely numbers on the scales. I think a huge, hugely um, beneficial resource that um, I've come across is the five A's, which I'm sure a lot of people have come across before. And really, this is something that we do with many other chronic diseases, but just uh, ha haven't really applied it to obesity and overweight. But asking permission, assessing the situation, giving advice, agreeing on a management plan uh, and assisting somebody with that management plan, whether it be education, referral and or booking a follow up. I think, again, if we're if we're talking to family or friends about their weight, I think a lot of the same rules hold true, not making assumptions, not blaming people uh, or shaming them, stigmatizing them, asking permission, um, not offering kind of helpful advice, uh, but certainly being supportive and encouraging, supporting people, encouraging them to be healthy, uh, to be active, to uh, make the best uh, decisions they can day to day. Um, and, you know, perhaps supporting them in, in seeking out medical uh, assistance uh, when managing this chronic disease. Certainly talking about health and not weight. Um, one of the major educational tools that I found fantastic in, in my practice was the Scope Online um, Learning Platform uh, run by the World Obesity Federation, which is very, very good. Um, and I think everybody should, should really have a look at that. Thank you very much for your attention.